What's up guys, DIY Savage guy here, and on this channel, we just learn as we go. Today's episode, we are on day number four of the wrap. We are so close to being done. We're making a lot of progress, and we're gonna be getting done with this very, very soon. So make sure you guys comment, let me know what you think of the build, how the wrap's looking, and also make sure you guys subscribe, turn on those post notifications, hit that like button, that really helps me out. Also make sure you guys are following me on all the socials, at DIY Savage guy. Check out the merch line down below. That really helps support the channel so that I can give you guys better and better builds every single day. All right, guys back another day we got the inlay done um, saw that previously so what we need to do now is get this bumper done so I think it should be pretty straightforward and pretty easy but anything I do is always difficult so we'll actually see how that's gonna turn out so we should be able to use the same piece for the front and rear bumper um, not certain if I need to take this off or not there's really no play in it um, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the wrap under there, but we'll see. Um, I don't have to take it off if I don't want to, but I'll mess with that real quick, measure it up, and then get going on this. Alright, so I decided to take the bumper off. We're going to take it off, we're going to get that bottom balance off, and then we're going to install it back on, that way we have tension. And then we're going to take it off again, put the balance back on, and then we'll install everything back together. We're gonna do the same thing for the front. We're gonna have to get those grills off, unfortunately, but we'll do what we gotta do, make this right the first time that we don't have to redo it, like I do on this channel with everything else. So, I'm gonna hop into this time lapse and get this done. All right, so we got the bumper off. Um, we were about to get started on it. We noticed that the rear bracket was actually cracked and loose. And what we noticed is we're missing one of these. So that's why the bumper is actually moving. Um, it actually goes right under here, it goes into here. So I can't put the bumper on and actually I might be able to still wrap it, but we're gonna have to kind of get another one of those pieces. I would imagine the Ford dealers are gonna have them readily in stock, so we'll try to do that tomorrow. But for now, I'm um, gonna put this bracket back on and hope for the best, but we're gonna be wrapping from left to right, so we won't be putting as much pressure on this side. We'll be pulling from here to there instead of the other way. So I think we should be okay. So I'm gonna give it a shot, see how it goes. Worst comes to worst, we'll come back at it tomorrow. All right guys, so we have the rear bumper mounted, as we said. We cleaned it all up, sprayed it down with some isopropyl. So we're good with that. Probably just wipe it down one more time. So what we did was we measured from the bumper. We need the furthest points. So I measured from the bumper all the way over to here again. It's about 10 feet, give or take. Um, then we need this width as well. So we should be good to do both the front and the rear bumper with one piece because this is gonna be much wider than we actually need it to be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure it out. We're gonna to toss it up on the actual vehicle and we're gonna cut it. That way we can have a piece for the front as well. Now the easiest way to do it is basically to just use magnets. If your car is steel, like a Mustang is, Use the magnets and basically just use a tape measure, 
whatever, and it works pretty well. So we'll do this in real time. Show you guys what I mean. All right, so this piece is obviously massive. We don't need anywhere near this, and I realize just how wide five feet actually is. So what we're gonna do is take it off and cut it up front and go from there. So I'll give you guys a quick look at how I'm cutting. So what I did was put a line down the middle. The backing paper has a nice design on it, so it makes it pretty easy. So I wanna do 30 inches for each side, five feet, 60 inches, so cut it right in the middle. Should be good. I guess uh, I might have to do this tomorrow. It's a little dark in here, but you guys could see it came out actually really, really well. I don't have any issues, any flaws or anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out um, and heat it up to make sure that everything is good. And then I will give you guys a look at it tomorrow when it gets a little lighter. Right now, back in the time lapse, let's cut this out and make it good. All right, let's give you guys a look in the daylight here, how it came out. A little bit of trash in here. Um, I don't know if it's trash or if it's actually just flaws in the bumper. We sanded it down, so it's probably trash. So we have a couple bumps here, a couple bumps here. Um, but overall, it came out pretty well. We cut down there, so that looks pretty good. No air bubbles, no nothing. Up here, it doesn't really matter because it's going to be covered by the tail light. Didn't come out good up here, but again, it doesn't matter. It's covered. Um, had a little trouble kind of glassing that off. I could technically cut it off and just leave it. You do the same thing all over here. We'll see if it bothers me or not, but not a big deal. Looking all right there. Uh, a couple of air bubbles we got to take care of here. Probably just pop them, um, no big deal. But overall looks really, really good. So um, tail light will obviously cover this. That is missing. Uh, we had to do like obviously an inlay, not really an inlay. Uh, we had to do a couple relief cuts and it wound up ripping a little bit further than I wanted it to, but that's all right due to the location of it. Um, but this all looks really good, really happy with it. So let's get this completely reassembled and then we'll, we're waiting for a part for the bumper and then we'll, uh, we'll throw it back on and we'll get working on the front. We get the bumper back on now. As I said, the whole thing about we're missing a grommet here, we're missing another piece over there. So we'll get it on, but we'll fully install it tomorrow. It's all coming together, guys. It's all coming together. Almost done with this. We're gonna do the same thing that we did on the back on the front. So we're gonna take these grills off. Um, it was a big pain in the butt to get off to begin with, but I'm hoping what I learned here with adding a little bit of heat will resonate towards that. So we're going to try that. We're going to toss some heat on it, um, get the top grill off, and then we're also going to get the bottom grill off as well. I'm going to try to not scratch it again. As I said, we got to take these grills off. 
I take this off, I think, because we're gonna have to tuck it under here, and we're gonna have to take this off as well. Um, I don't think there's any way that we can do this without taking this off. We might be able to, but this piece itself is definitely gonna have to come off because we're not gonna have access. In order to stretch and do what we need to do. So the top part at least has to come off. So we will take care of that for everyone. Really just held on by a couple push tabs. So I'm gonna throw some heat on, throw it in the time lapse, and see if I can get this off. So I just want to give you guys a quick look at what has worked for me in order to get these tabs off. Um, so I use my trim removal kit and I also use the heat gun as you can see here. And so a little bit of heat and I kind of put the trim removal tool in here. And basically the way that these kind of slide in is these have a little lip. Um, can't see it right now, but these have a little lip and it kind of just sits over this. So what this does is it actually just puts this lip out and now all of these are, are already removed. So this should just slide right out now. So should be nice and easy. Um, so this side came out very easily, but to anyone struggling getting these things on or off, heat and little plastic trim pieces are phenomenal for this. So um, just wanted to give you guys a quick tip. All right guys, so what we're gonna do right now is just swap out this bracket right here. Um, when we we're installing the bumper. I think one of these clips up here broke. So we ordered up a new one and super simple. Just need a couple of bolts. I'm gonna to try to give you guys the best angle that I possibly can with this. The issue is that the car is up on the jack stands right now and it's kind of pushed up. So it's gonna be hard to give you guys the proper angle. So right now I'm gonna install the bumper, get it on there, secured, and we already have the wrap measured out. And so we're gonna start installing it out. Get the hood propped up and uh, get going on. All right, just want to give you guys a quick update here. Um, kind of didn't do as good on this one as I would have hoped. I think the issue is that I needed an inlay or an overlay or something um, for this top part. I tried, tried as I might. I was not able to, to get it to fold down correctly. I was able to get it over here, but then I couldn't get it over here and I couldn't get it because of this thing. And it was just a mess. So what I wound up doing was I just wound up cutting it um, so now I have just a little bit that needs to have a new piece put on it. 
So, but the catch is that I need to cut an entire new piece of that, unfortunately, uh, because this is wider than this whole piece. So I have a couple scrap pieces and it doesn't make it. So it's very disappointing that the, uh, that I'm kind of in this situation. Um, wish I kind of planned ahead a little bit better because I could have just saved the piece that I used on this and put it on the inlay to begin with. But we live and learn. So I probably need like an, probably like an eight foot piece here. Um, so I gotta go from here all the way over there. But that's gonna be a plan for another day because right now I'm exhausted and I need a break. So we'll come back to this probably tomorrow. All right guys, just a quick recap here. So what we're gonna be doing is doing a overlay. Probably should've did an inlay on it, but I already did the bottom, so we're gonna do an overlay with it. And what we're gonna do is, because this is all kind of jagged and everything, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift it up from the other side and we're just gonna cut across and make it so that we have a nice solid piece. We'll put some knifeless tape down here as well. That way, we have a nice easy looking piece and we don't have any issues with it. It's starting to peel up here on this side a little bit. This looks like crap over here. So we're just gonna make this look nice, as nice as possible. But lesson learned, we are learning as we go. That's what we do here. And should have did this first. And maybe even this as well, because the way it contours and turns and one piece of vinyl is just not, uh, not good for that. So we learned. And we're gonna knock it out right now. We're gonna finish this car hopefully today and get it driving again. All right, so quick update on what we're gonna do. We need an inlay, obviously, as we said a couple times here, an overlay, whatever it's gonna be, but it's wider than the scrap pieces that we have. So we do need another piece. It's gonna be about six feet wide um, or long, I guess. And what I wanna do is I also want to redo this door and I wanna redo this quarter panel back here because we messed up here. And we're gonna take the side scoop off as well and make sure that we wrap all the way in. So when we do that, we're going to get rid of some of the initial mess ups that we have here. Um, and get going on that. So the fender looks good. I'm not gonna redo the fender. I'm happy with the way the fender looks. So we're not gonna to touch anything with that, but we are gonna do these two. So we're gonna use one piece in order to do the bumper and the door and the rear quarter panel as well. So we're gonna get all that done with one piece. Um, so it's gonna be 12 feet long, a little bit longer than normal. Um, the other one was about six and a half, or 11 and a half, sorry. And we need to make sure that we have enough room here be able to cover what we need to and not have any issues so we marked it off we measured it up and we're going to we're gonna cut it out All right, so the old adage is measure twice, cut once. That way you don't make any mistakes. I have measured about 35 different times. And I want to make sure that I have no, absolutely no issues. So let me just give you guys a quick rundown of how this is going to look and what it's going to actually be like. So we are going to first cut this bottom part. This bottom part is what we need for the bumper. So we measured this, we measured the bumper. We're gonna try to do an inlay here. We're gonna to try to cut it to form so that we're good. Outlay, overlay, whatever the lay, lay, olay. So we're gonna do all that. Then this portion from here to here is gonna be for our door. This gives us about 36 inches. That's what we need for the door. So we'll be good with that. Um, so I need to figure out where I'm cutting back here still, but we're gonna run the blade pretty much down right here. And that way we'll have enough to contour down along the quarter panel. And so 
I drew it out just so that you guys can see it. When you're cutting these films, from what I've seen from everyone, you don't want to cut out like this. You want to kind of do it like this and then kind of stretch it down like that. I don't know why, but that's what we're going to do. So that's what we did on the other side. That's what we did on this originally. It worked. So a little heat and uh, we'll keep going with that. So, but when we do that, you have to make sure that you have enough room in order to kind of put it up here and then kind of slide it down. So we're going to give ourselves as much slack up here as we possibly can. And then we'll, uh, we'll be good in order to kind of do all that. So then the rest of this, we got a quarter panel back here. This will all be going to be excess. Um, so the quarter panel only comes over about here. Then down here, we're cutting. So we should be pretty good with this. So we're going to start cutting this. Um, we're just going to measure out the door outline, make sure I know where we're going to be cutting for the door. Um, and uh, we should be good. So. Day number four is complete. We are so close to being done with this. Next episode, we are going to be finishing it up and we're also going to be dropping down it and reassembling it to make sure that this car is done. We've got one more thing to do after that as well. So make sure you guys stick along, comment, how's the car looking? Let me know what you guys think. Do you like the color? Subscribe, ring that bell for post notifications. Follow me on the socials at DIY Salvage Guy. Check out the merch line. Thank you guys for being here. Hopefully you guys will be inspired by this. Understand that DIY is a way of life. You just learn as you go. Try to become a DIY salvage guy yourself.